Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah K. Ramsey here to talk about finding love and success after a toxic relationship so you can bounce back better. And so often women come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I have PTSD, you know, or see PTSD and trauma bonded and I'm codependent and, you know, all these really horrible, scary words that make healing feel like it's going to take a long, 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 long time. Um, and I enrolled a, a, a lady decided to work with me today and um, she said her mother was in therapy five days a week for the last five years. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Um, healing can become your hobby, right? And which is a very dangerous thing. Healing should not be your hobby. But when you have words like CPTSD or PTSD or trauma bonding or codependency, it's like, oh man, these like big scary words that like uh, need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time to fix. Okay. So what if they didn't? What if you didn't need all that time? What if healing could be more quick uh, than you imagined? Um, and I read an article today from the Harvard Business Review and it talked about post traumatic growth post-traumatic growth and it's talking about a bell curve and um you know there are some people who experience something uh like a toxic relationship which is absolutely traumatic um and they you know feel they never really recover right they're, they're kind of stuck they get stuck okay but it can be an opportunity for post traumatic growth. And that is absolutely a beautiful word for what I have experienced in my own life and what I have seen experienced time after time after time after time after time after time for the women that I work with. Healing should not be your hobby. When you're talking about PTSD and you're talking about uh, trauma bonding or codependency or whatever, it's all about healing from the toxic person. I have, I have PTSD from my toxic person. I'm, you know, trauma bonded with my toxic person. I have codependency issues because of my toxic person or several toxic people. If your healing process is about toxic people, it is not going to work and you are going to spend a lifetime healing. There's going to be someone who is going to be willing to take your money each and every week as you talk about your toxic person, as you talk about what they're doing and who liked their Facebook post recently and what they said to tick you off and how you got triggered. They will be happy, happy, happy to keep that process going and you will be processing, 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 processing and you never get to a point of progressing. Healing is not a hobby. Healing should have a period at the end of the sentence. I'm not one of these people who say, oh, you know, healing is a lifelong journey because I don't want to give that toxic people that much power in your life. That is hopeless to me. That is hopeless to me to say you had someone be toxic to you and now you need to find someone to pay and sit, go sit in an office each week to talk about this person. You need to research this person. You need to read about this person. You need to become obsessed with studying toxic people or studying narcissism or whatever it is. And people do that. Then they wonder why they don't feel better. Post traumatic growth is possible. And if you're doing the right stuff, if you're solving problems that actually have solutions, it's going to be probable, not just possible, but probable. Um, one of the things, and this is a, uh, this, he did work in the army within this post-traumatic growth, the disorders, or uh, post-traumatic growth, it's not a disorder. He definitely wasn't talking about toxic relationships. He did mention divorce, but, um, he talked about reconnecting with your strengths. And I was like, yeah, strength-based healing. I call it strength-based healing. Um, and if you're working with someone and you're not focused on strength-based healing, something is wrong, right? If you are tearing apart your weaknesses, tearing apart your weak childhood, tearing apart your weak parents, tearing apart your neediness, tearing apart whatever it is, you need, the healing process needs to reconnect you with your strengths. You are never going to get the life you want. 
talking about your weaknesses. I, I'm a classical pianist, and I remember one time I was thinking about taking guitar lessons, and I was in my 20s. Um, I was thinking about taking guitar lessons, and I read something from Strength Finders, and it said, you know, people say work on your weaknesses, but no one's ever going to pay you for your weaknesses. They pay you for your strengths. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And so, and so I started taking piano lessons again, even after 20 years of piano lessons. Um, because I was like, yes, I need to work on my strengths. Not, not that we don't address our weaknesses, especially if it's anger, especially, you know, and not that anger is a weakness, but long-term anger and bitterness is not what you guys want for your life. I know that. Um, you know, there's some things we can patch up, but not to lead with. You don't want to lead with your weaknesses. You don't want to lead with what's wrong with you. You want to, cre to create a life you're excited about living. You want to lead with what's right with you. You want to reconnect with what's right with you. You want to focus on your strengths so you can come up with that post-traumatic growth and finally drop the people-pleasing and finally discover your purpose in life and finally figure out who you want to be and become the best version of you so that whether it's a parent, partner, friend, whoever, they see that best, most powerful version of you not not a broken version of you. When you focus on words like PTSD and trauma bonding, it can really create, make you feel like you're broken. Um, you probably feel broken. I remember feeling very, very broken. Um, but as we put ourselves back together, you want to lead with your strengths through that strength-based healing, not through what's wrong with you. And that's how I program. Um, it's made of three sections. Uh, the first is reconnecting what's right with you. Second, becoming toxic person proof. And three, designing a life you're excited about living. Because if your healing process is focused on healing from the toxic person, then it's still about the toxic person. The toxic person is still in control. The toxic person is in control of your thoughts. They're in control of your hobbies. They're in control of the way uh, you make decisions. Um, so, you want to heal from a toxic relationship? Heal you. Start focusing on your own growth, not just on healing from the toxic person. Because as long as your life is about the toxic person, you'll never have the life you want. So, hope that helps. Hope you are all doing well in this time of social distancing. I'm an off-the-charts extrovert, so thank goodness I have a business from home. So I can um, reconnect with people through that. But I hope you guys are healthy. hope you are safe. If you have any questions, you can write it in the comments, and I will answer. Have a great day.